a song. My sister uh -huh. Charlene sang a song today that contributed uh -huh. to our edification. Uh -huh. Sometimes you'll hear some of these younger, the younger children. They'll quote their scriptures, make a comment. It, it, strength, it strengthens you. Yeah. Because they did what they could, uh -huh. and it strengthened you. Uh -huh. Or some on the other brother, and they, ex they excel to edifying the church. Let all things. You had to tell him this. Why? Because there's a tendency in a religious setting to, to crystallize your thinking and to kind of settle, kind of settle down and squat on the premises and be satisfied with what you have. There's a tendency to do that because all around us we're surrounded with kind of a, a moral and spiritual deadness. Mm -hmm. It's kind of all around, and it makes you overestimate where you're at in Christ. Mm -hmm. If you if you compare yourself with, then, well, I'm glad I'm not like that. Well, you don't want to think like this. You want to say, I want to be like that. You've yeah, you got to yeah. think a different way. And the body of Christ will, will help one another do this if everything's done unto edification. Mm -hmm. That's why there's a lot of things we don't have here. There are other places that there's, you know, like birthday offerings and anniversaries. It's not that these are like dead wrong. It's that they're not right. Yeah. It's just like, <laughs> do that in your spare time type things. This is not what you do when you come together. Yeah. Yeah. At all. Amen. Or announce who's getting married and who's not, and you spend a lot of time doing this, and let all things be done to edifying Paul. Why in the world do you have to say something like that? Because there's like a downward, kind of a downward pull to neutralize. Why the things that go on may not be just really bad things. It's not like that. It's just that they're not really good for building. Yeah. It's like someone trying to say, well, I got, I got a little cotton ball here. Can I put that in the wall? Could that be part of... You say, this is no place. We've got to have something solid. This is We're building solid character and solid people. We can't have car carnal cotton balls in there. That's not going to help us, see? Yeah, let all things be done to edify. And the gifts that are uh, edify are above all the others. Now here at 1 Thessalonians 5.11, Paul talk, talks to the Thessalonians. Wherefore, comfort yourselves together. Notice what he says. Comfort yourselves together. And edify one another, even as also you do. Keep on doing that. To, you know, I like this together. Mm -hmm. There's something about together. Mm -hmm. a, it has an effect that other times don't have. Now, let's, uh, now that shows you the, the, God's purpose is to edify. The church, when it comes together, its purpose to edify. That's it. When the church comes together, its aim is not to convert the sinner that comes in. Mm -hmm. yeah. mm -hmm. That's yeah. not its aim. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Right. Now, if it's benefying one another, that will convict that sinner that come in. Yeah, amen. Yeah. Remember Paul said someone come in as a stranger and unlearned, yeah. and you all prophesy, he'll fall on his face yeah, and say, that's right. it count the thoughts of his heart will be amen. made known. Yeah. See, that's what convicts a that's sinner. Right. Mm -hmm. It's the stable believers amen. Yes. Amen. that's speaking in concert. Mm -hmm. They're united amen. in the faith, amen. and they're building up one another, and that's the thing that convicts the sinner. Amen. That's right. Mm -hmm. It still does sometimes. If you're ever around someone that's more godly than you, it still has the same effect. Yes, yeah. it does. Yes. Yeah. <clears throat> now let's look at the, uh, from the personal aspect. Now that was the collective aspect. Edification of the assemblies to edify, build up. Let's look at the personal aspect. What about person when you're not in the assembly? All right. Romans 14, 19. Listen to this. Let us therefore follow after the things which make for peace, and things for with one may edify another. <laughs> See, everyone's, you, you got to launch out on this yourself. This is something no one else, else can do for you. Don't put into your life things that produce questions in other people's mind about what you are and who you are. Amen. Mm. Yeah. Don't do that. You pursue things, pursue things that are uh, noble and good and make for peace. They're not disruptive. At all. Here's another. Romans 15, 2. Let every one of us please his neighbor for his good to edification. So there's a, like a one on one. <laughs> when you're with any, anybody, you want to make sure they're better off because they were, you were with them. They're better off. Mm -hmm. Here's another. Ephesians 4, 29. Let no corrupt communication proceed out of your mouth but that which is good for the use of edifying, that it may minister grace unto the hearers. Mm -hmm. So now you learn that edifying has to do, it's, grace is employed in edifying. Mm -hmm. Corrupt communication doesn't just mean swearing, dirty jokes and things like that. It does mean that, to that but that's not limited to that. Mm -hmm. 
That's a, when we're around you, we really don't want to hear a political analysis. Mm -hmm. I'm not saying that you're wrong in this. That's not what I'm saying. I'm saying let's let's seek a little higher level of communication than that. There's some, if you want to talk about politics, there's some other people you can talk about politics to. When you when you're with God's people, unless you approach it from a godly manner, that'd be that'd be something else. But seek things for one can edify another one on one. You say, well, I don't speak very well. Well, what you're you're not exempt from this. No. You say, well, I don't, I have a hard time speaking. Well, start praying that you don't have a hard time speaking, because you've got to edify has to do with speech. Mm -hmm. Yes. Where one may edify another. Mm -hmm. Why? Because that's where God's going with salvation. Here now, let's let's, let's take the, the situation that you're confronting people, that they're they're talking about uncomely things. All right. Here's First Timothy one four. Neither give heed to fables and endless genealogies which minister questions, rather than godly edifying, mm -hmm. which is in faith. So do so you avoid discussions that pull you down in the quagmire. And, uh, and finally, this uh, Colossians 2, 6, and 7. As ye have therefore received Christ Jesus the Lord, so walk ye in Him, rooted, rooted, mm -hmm. and built up in Him, and established mm -hmm. in the faith. Mm -hmm. That's edifying. Mm -hmm. That's what it is. Mm -hmm. And uh, you know I know already, but let me remind you of it, that we're being built together for a house, not a tent. Yeah. Mm -hmm. 1 Peter 2, 5. Ye also as lively stones are built together a spiritual house, edifying, a holy priesthood, to offer up spiritual sacrifices to God. See, so what does that mean? It means a weak church can't offer sacrifices to God. I'm sorry, they may even have a worship leader. It still can't happen. You're built up and established in the faith so this can happen. So that's God's agenda. And as individuals, you have this mandate also to build up yourselves on your most holy faith. Mm -hmm. So when nobody else is around, you do that. Edify yourself, build yourself up in the most holy faith. Then you'll be able to edify when you come into a mm -hmm. congregation. Yeah. Mm -hmm.